Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano with a new statement that came out on October 15th, 2021. And this time, Archbishop Vigano is warning us about a dictatorship of globalism that is centered on ecology. And part of this warning refers to what he calls the green idol. He refers to the green idol venerated by Bergoglio, by which he means Pope Francis. So today I'm not going to go through the whole presentation of Archbishop Vigano. Uh, what I am going to do is focus on the green idol and the green pass that Archbishop Vigano is talking about, and then also look at the two paragraphs where he talks about the new world religion and for tolerance and to be frank, celebration of all religious traditions, not just the Catholic religion, not just Christianity, but a universal religion, what Archbishop Vigano calls ecumenical pantheon, uh, the ecumen ecumenical pantheon, pardon me. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how this new world order religion is basically just the principle of globalism, the principle of Marxism applied to religion. That's all it is, really. So before we get started, I'll invite you to like the video, share it on Facebook. You are my algorithm. YouTube doesn't care about these topics, so they won't be shared. So you have to share them with your family, your friends, your relatives, people who are confused, people trying to make sense of all this. I think Archbishop Vigano has some very insightful things to, to say today. So please share it on Facebook. And of course, if you're new, welcome to the channel and please subscribe and hit the bell. You'll be notified. We begin the show with a prayer and we pray in Latin, universal, and we'll pray the Our Father before we get started. Oremus nomine Patris et Fidii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi, Sanctificetur Nomen Tuum, Advenia Regnum Tuum, Fiat Voluntas Tua, Secut in Cielo et in Terra, Panam Nostrum Quotidianum da Nobis Odie, et dimite Nobis Debita Nostra, Secut et Nos Dimitimus Debitoribus Nostris, et ne Nos Inducas in Tentationem, Sed Libera Nos Amalo. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And I'll say before we get started here that the Mother Earth religion, Pachamama, the Great Mother, Demeter, Sibyl, all these ancient traditions focus on the feminine. I think our Lord, Jesus Christ, before he died, rose again, sent into heaven, intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. When the apostle said, how are we going to pray? How do we pray? He says, when you pray, pray our Father. And I've talked about that in other podcasts. Again, you can search my channel um, in which I talk about why it is that the religion of the Old Testament and the religion of the New Testament in the Bible identifies God with male pronouns. Those are his preferred pronouns. You don't get to impose your pronouns on God. He chose them for a theological reason. We won't go into that today, but you can search on my YouTube channel or on uh, any other podcast um, app. Uh, I'm on Amazon. I'm on Audible. This podcast is on Spotify. It's on Stitcher. It's on all the, the major uh, podcasts. So if you want to listen and not just watch on YouTube, you can do it there. Just search my name, Taylor Marshall, and it'll come up. Okay, so Archbishop Vigano. He asks a question. Again, I'm not reading the whole thing. I'm just reading some the parts that have to do with the green religion and the New World Order religion. For those of you just joining us, this is from the most recent Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano statement that came out on August 15th for No Fear Day in Turin, Italy. Incidentally, I've been all over Italy, and I have I went to Turin to see the Shroud of Turin, which was an amazing experience. But of all the places in Italy, you know, Italy seems to have a lot of uh, joy, happiness, beauty. But I found, and maybe someone can explain this to me, that of all the places I've been in Italy, Turin, to me, seemed the coldest. Um, 
I don't know if that's to do with its geography. I don't know all the reason for that. I've heard there is a lot, a lot of occult activity in Turin. Um, but no, no offense to anyone in Turin, but um, I don't know. It just had a very, it had a, to me, a non-Italian feeling. And I don't know why that is. But anyway, this document is related or addressed for the No Fear Day in Turin, Italy. Archbishop Vigano asked this, what will stop them from pressing a button and preventing us from using money? Only because we are not registered in a certain political party or because we have not worshipped Mother Earth, the new green idol venerated even by Bergoglio. And I said a couple of weeks ago, you know, we in the Catholic space, especially traditional Catholics, those who like the traditional Latin mass, who have deep concerns and problems with the new liturgy, with even items in the new canon law, even items in uh, the liturgy of the hours, the new breviary. We debate and we whisper about Pope Francis and, you know, Amoris Laetitia and is there heresy there? Or what about when he said this? And what about when he said that? And of course, the problem is, Robert Bellarmine says that a manifest heretic would de facto lose the papacy. And that brings us into a big conversation about sedeve contism. And, you know, it could lead some people to ask the question, is Benedict still the Pope? Was the 2013 conclave election valid? Did it follow canonical norms, etc.? I'm going to bracket all that because it's a big conversation. And it's hard to do in a monologue like right now on YouTube. But what I am going to bring up is the fact, the very fact. So we could debate material heresy, formal heresy, manifest heresy. But there is a fact that Pope Francis instituted, encouraged, oversaw idolatry in the Vatican gardens and in the Vatican. For example... Let me show some images here. You'll remember the Pachamama incident. You might say, well, he's just sitting there on a chair looking at it. Yes, but if you'll remember, what actually happened is there were about 15 people in a circle on their hands and knees with their face on the ground around the Pacha idol at this incident. Here's a picture of it with some kind of spiritual female leader leading this, what looks to me, as a liturgy. So when Archbishop Vigano says that Bergoglio venerates the green idol, he's not talking that it's painted green. He's talking about it's the idol of Mother Earth. It's the ultimate idol of ecology. Sadly, if you look at this picture right here, you even see a Franciscan friar. He's even down bowing before the statues brought from South America that signify not Our Lady, not the Blessed Virgin. It's not the Blessed Virgin of the Amazon. The Vatican and the Pope clarified that. This is Pachamama. Pachamama is a goddess. Let's go on Wikipedia. Type in Pachamama and you'll see that it's a South American goddess. So we can debate all day long over the H word heresy with regard to Pope Francis Bergoglio, but we can't debate on this issue of idolatry. It's in our face. And it's not, you know, he didn't bring in an idol of, you know, who's the elephant head god of the Hindus? I always, Ganesh. I think it's Ganesh. He didn't bring in Ganesh. He didn't bring in uh, Hermes. He didn't bring in something from the Roman pantheon. He brought in Mother Earth. Now, I've done other videos talking about the ancient Roman pre-Christian cult to the Great Mother, which comes to Rome from Anatolia of the Sibyl cult, which is a Mother Earth cult and that priesthood the golly priesthood were men who did their hair like women wore makeup wore female clothing and according to saint augustine had a gait like a woman 
and also castrated themselves. They cut off. So all that was going on in Rome. So in a way, this is just the Amazonian version of that Mother Earth cult. So this is what Vigano is talking about. If you're not familiar, I, I think if you watch my podcast, you know all about Vigano, you know all about Pachamama. Okay, so he says it could come a point where you can't even use money because you're not part of a political party or you haven't worshipped Mother Earth. Now, there's a second part to this. If you skip down a couple, actually three paragraphs, and if you want to read this, uh, Archbishop Vigano sent me a copy. He sent it out to, I think, several people. Um, I didn't have time before the show to go put it at my site, taylormarshall.com, but you can see it at LifeSite News. So if you want to read along with me, you can go to LifeSite News. It's one of the lead stories. So Archbishop Vigano says, we, we respect all cultures and religious traditions they specify. And it is indeed true that all of the idols and superstitions find a place in the ecumenical pantheon of the new universal religion desired by Freemasonry and the Bregolian church. Pause here. Now, every time I say the F word, and I mean the Freemason word, people get bent out of shape. We have all been trained since we were children to hear the word Freemasonry and go, oh my goodness, what a lame, lame conspiracy theory I am about to hear. As a matter of fact, every time I do a podcast on the F word, YouTube always puts something under my video about Freemasonry. Always happens. Always. That is because there is a cultural incentive to make people to dismiss the conversation and to dismiss the topic. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When we talk about Freemasonry, all we are talking about is the political, economic, and religious worldview that says man is the measure of all things, it's humanism, and that we can elevate humanity to a God-like status. How do we do that? Through politics, through economics, and through religion. This is why the Freemasons use two analogies in their ritual to symbolize that reality. Those two analogies are alchemy, that is turning base metals like lead into gold. I talk about in my book, Infiltration, if you want to get caught up on some of this as it applies to church history and key players in the church, there's a whole section in the beginning on the allegory of alchemy. And it is the satanic promise of Satan, the serpent, to Eve in Genesis 3. And that is, you can become God by your own natural powers. By being savvy, you can become your own God. We can take lead or iron and we can turn it by a magical process, and you have to trust us to get it into God. So that's one of the allegories used by Freemasonry or secret societies. The other one is building a new temple, a new society. So this is really the word Freemasonry, right? They're free people who are Masons. And what, what's, what are they doing with these bricks? How are they engaging in masonry, what they're doing is, is they're building a new humanity, a new temple, a new Solomon's temple. And that's the other allegory is, and this goes back to what's written on Baphomet's forearms and is written on J.K. Rowling's and a tattoo on her wrist. It is the warning that Archbishop Vigano gave to Donald Trump during the election year, and that is solve et coagula, which is Latin for dissolve, break up, and rebuild. So the, the purpose of this allegory is we're going to break down and destroy all societies and all religions. And then as Freemasons, Masonry, we're going to take these bricks as building blocks and we're going to build back better. 
going to build a new Solomon's temple where all of humanity will come together in one world religion, which will facilitate one world government with one world economy, with a one world bank and a one world currency. And this whole project is called, to them, Novus Ordo Seculorum, which means New Order of the Ages. Strictly in Latin, it gets translated as New World Order. That's commonly how you see it. But literally, it is the New Order of the Ages. And it is the observation of many people, including Archbishop Vigano, including myself, including a bunch of other very intelligent people, that what we are seeing over the past, not 10 years, not 20 years, not 50 years, but over the past 100 to 200 years, is a progressive and intentional shift towards the principles you see up here. One world religion, one world government, and one world economy. A novus ordo. So this is why Francis says, and it is indeed true that all the idols and superstitions find a place in the ecumenical pantheon of the new universal religion desired by Freemasonry and the Bregolian Church. Vigano goes on to say, but there is only one religion that is banned. The true religion that our Lord taught to the apostles, the religion that the church proposes to us for belief. It is indeed true that in the globalist melting pot of all cultures will find acceptance with the exception of our religion. The barbarism of polygamy, rudeness, incivility, opprobrium, everything that is ugly and obscene and offensive has the right to manifest itself and impose itself. And at the same time, with the utmost coherence, civilization, true culture, the treasures of art and literature, the testimonies of our faith expressed in churches, monuments, paintings, and music, all of these must be banned so there can be no confrontation between them. So the one religion, according to Archbishop Vigano, that is banned in the New World Order melting pot is Catholicism as you found it 100 years ago. As we were waiting for this podcast, I try to put up a poll in the live chat. So if you're live with me now, you can see that poll. If you are watching this later, you won't see that poll. But in the poll, I asked, would a pope from 1,000 years ago look at the agenda of Francis and say, that is a Catholic agenda. And in the poll, before I went live here, it, it looked like over 90% were saying no. A, a pope from a thousand years ago would not look at the agenda today and say, yeah, that's Catholic. That's a big problem. That shows an infiltration. The church is still the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The church is the body of Christ. But what happened is, is there's a parasite living off the one true body. And that parasite is heresy and modernism and Satanism. Now, the one true religion is what? The one true religion is found in the Apostles' Creed, where we confess the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we also confess the actual historical redemption accomplished by Christ. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis, where it's foretold in Genesis 3.15. And it's prophesied for hundreds and hundreds of pages and in narratives and in typology and in actual explicit prophecies about the coming of the Son of Man, who's also called the Son of God, who's also called the Messiah. And all of that culminates so that when you move from the Old Testament to the New Testament, in Matthew's Gospel, you read about the virgin birth. At last, the Messiah, the Son of God, is born, not of man, but of God himself. Our Lady, the Blessed Mother, is incarnate by the Holy Ghost, a virgin birth. And he lives a perfect life. This is the Son of God, fully God and fully man. He lives a perfect life on earth 
to fulfill God's law as a human perfectly. Adam and Eve didn't do it and no human since except the Blessed Virgin Mary by a singular privilege in the Immaculate Conception. I've done podcasts on that if you want to learn more. Just check here on the, on the channel. He is rejected by his own people, which is really a surprise in the narrative. And he is crucified by the instrumental work of Pontius Pilate and the Romans, but he is accused and shouted down, crucify him, crucify him by his own people, by his own nation, by his own Sanhedrin, by his own high priest, convicted falsely and sentenced to death. And when he dies on the cross, since he is an infinite divine person, who is assumed a human nature, but he's an infinite and divine person, he can pay as a human an infinite and divine price for sins. He makes redemption for every single human person. And then to vindicate his mission and to show that he's the Lord over death, he rises again. He resurrects on the third day. And it's in this context that he commissions 12 apostles to go and baptize and teach all nations. And this is the Catholic Church, the universal church that spreads throughout the world. And the presence of Christ and his graces are communicated to sinners from that moment to the end of time through preaching, apostolic preaching, which you can't change. You can't make up your own doctrines. It has to be what Christ taught the apostles handed down over the centuries and found in sacred scripture. So scripture and tradition. And not only through this preaching of the gospel, also through his presence and his graces are communicated to sinners through the church and her seven sacraments. So this is the traditional religion given by Christ to the 12 apostles and then passed down unbroken for every single generation all the way till now into this very year. That is the one true religion. Now, all these problems over here on your right side of the screen, they can't have that. They don't want Christ to be king. They don't want salvation to be free, gracious, moral, righteous, in accord with God's law and God's promises. No, just like Satan, in their pride, they say, we, by our own human nature and ingenuity, we will build a new temple a new economy, a new religion, a new government. And those who will not join us in our sacrilege and in our pride, they will have to be canceled. In the early church, we called that canceling the ultimate price was martyrdom. Most of the saints were martyrs. It was rare to have a saint who wasn't a martyr in the early church. And then Francis says, you know, everything that is rude, ugly, obscene, disgusting, polygamous, barbarous, all these things are promoted and celebrated. Ugly art, ugly buildings, ugly cities, ugly clothes, ugly liturgy, ugly churches. That's celebrated. That's promoted. Money goes towards the ugly. And then he says, what is be what beautiful and true and good and Catholic expressed in beautiful churches and beautiful art and beautiful monuments and paintings and glorious music, that's banned. That's mocked. It's ridiculed. It's not promoted. And then Vigano says, there is no term of comparison that shows how horrible the world that they long for is and how preferable is the world that they have made us deny and despise. In other words, they're promising to turn lead into gold. 
they're promising to build a new Solomon's temple, a new civilization. But in what image are they building it? They're building it in the image of hell. It's ugly. It's not polite. It's not pure. It's not chaste. It's not gloriously beautiful. It's loud and jagged and dark. This is why I'm reading this part of Archbishop Vigano. I think it's a great insight. You know, we're not just talking about dogma. We are talking about dogma. And you cannot be saved if you deny even one dogma of Jesus Christ. You have to believe all the dogmas. Everything taught by Christ or the apostles. Everything. But that also relates to civilization and family and economy and music and art. And you will know a tree by its fruit. And our society rejoices in the ugly. One more part here, and we'll close up. Archbishop Vigano says, The lie reigns, and there is no citizenship for the truth. You have experienced this in, a rec in recent months, seeing with what brazenness the mainstream has delivered propaganda on behalf of, a, I'm going to say, a certain narrative. Censuring every discordant voice. And today, those who are not in agreement with the system are not only derided and discredited, but are even criminalized, pointed out as public enemies, and passed off as madmen on whom compulsory things, changing some words here, should be imposed. End quote. So although we hear about tolerance, and inclusivity of every point of view, every person. And by the way, Pope Francis' Synod on Synodality is all about including everyone. And, and Matt Gaspers was here on Friday, and he read from the documents about how not even non-Catholics, other people from other religions are able to, to contribute to the synodality of the Catholic Church. That's the vision going forward. This is what Vigano calls the Bergoglian Church, not the Catholic Church. See, Archbishop Vigano believes in a parallel church, but it's not actually really a church. It apes the real church. Remember I talked about the true body and then the parasite? It's the parasite. And the parasite is trying to infiltrate. That's why I named my book Infiltration. It's trying to infiltrate the true body and take it over. But see, the problem is, is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, second, per Trinity, second person of the Trinity, was smarter than that. He created an immune system within the church to kill and expel parasites and disease. And just as it's happened with the Gnostics, the Gnostics were killed, their heresy was killed and expelled, the Arians, their heresy killed and expelled, the Nestorians, the Monophysites, the monothelites, the iconoclasts, all through the ages, the immune system of the body, which is given life by the Holy Ghost, identifies the parasite and destroys the parasite. That's why you have to have a smile on your face today. It's bad having a parasite. We have a parasite. But that's not the church. That's a parasite on the church, or you could say infiltrating the church. So that's the letter. I encourage you to read all of it. Archbishop Vigano has uh, great insights. And towards the end, he says, you know, there's the gate of hell, and then there's the Yanuacelli, which is the gate of heaven, the door of heaven, which is a title that we invoke the Blessed Virgin Mary under. Why is she the gate of heaven? Because it is through her, through her immaculate womb, that the second person of the Trinity, the Logos, the Son of God, that was the gate that he chose to go from heaven to earth. And that makes her special. And it makes her a special friend to us. She has a special connection to Jesus. She provided the humanity to the Son of God. They have a special connection. And we honor that and we celebrate that as... Just pure beauty. The Blessed Virgin Mary is pure beauty. 
With that being said, make sure you pray your rosary every day. If you don't pray the rosary, you're not on the team. Praying the rosary is focusing on something beautiful. Very beautiful. Um, let's see. In closing here, I'd like to, uh, and again, invite you to, to like, share it on, on Facebook, and subscribe. And then also, if you want to support this channel, I do appreciate it. I'll send you some signed books and some merch, coffee mugs. Also, at a certain level, at student level, you'll get online courses with me if you want to learn about the traditional Latin Mass, the history of the Roman Rite. I have a whole year-long course on that that you can take with me online on your own time. I have a whole year-long course on apologetics. How do you share and defend the Catholic faith with a Jehovah's Witness, a Muslim, a Jewish friend, a Mormon, a Protestant? I have a whole year-long course on that. So you can find out more by being a student patron at patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. Or you can go direct to newsaintthomas.com and that is the New St. Thomas Institute. It's been around now for eight years. Eight years I've been doing online courses. You can sign up at NewStThomas.com directly, and you will get access to all eight courses. That is Catholic theology, Catholic philosophy, Thomas Aquinas, uh, church fathers, medieval theology, um, post-Reformation theology, apologetics, Liturgy, traditional Latin Mass, Roman Rite, it's all there, one tuition price. It's a great deal. Um, perhaps some of you that are in the in the uh, live chat or in the comments can talk about how much you benefited from it. So um, that's two ways to go deeper, to know your faith more, um, to use an online platform to study theology. And of course, we also have a whole program um, where you can earn certificates in Catholic theology the Roman Rite, etc. So check that out at NewStThomas.com. And again, thanks to everyone who supports over at Patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. I do appreciate it. So let's pray the rosary. Let's read scripture. Let's get deeper in our faith. Maybe you can do that through New St. Thomas Institute. Uh, of course, read the Catechism of the Council of Trent. Uh, no one's going to do this for you. I mean, it's very rare to have a priest who not only is preaching amazing sermons and celebrating beautiful traditional Latin Mass, which there are thousands of priests out there, and we thank you, but also with you know the demands of confession and visiting the sick and doing everything that priests do, they're not able to just set up you know weekly courses going through everything that you need to learn in this life. So look for other ways that you can supplement your theological Catholic education. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed.